Hi, it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about the angular overlap method. One of the biggest problems when constructing orbital mixing diagrams for metal D complexes is the relative placement of the different orbitals. The angular overlap method was developed to help give numbers to these interactions. It is based on the sigma interaction of a single pair of electrons with the dz squared orbital. When they are in phase, the interaction energy is defined as plus E sigma, and when they are out of phase, it is negative E sigma. Remember, though, that plus E sigma is a negative number because the interaction is favorable, and a minus E sigma is positive because it is an unfavorable interaction. For an octahedral complex, there are two d orbitals that are metal ligand antibonding, dz squared and dx squared minus y squared which are degenerate with exactly the same energy by symmetry. So this works as the bond of the dz squared along the z axis is treated as minus e sigma in both directions, and the equatorial groups are minus a quarter e sigma. This is due to the shape of the d orbital around the equator, and that the coefficient from the symmetry adapted linear combination is much smaller than the z axis interactions. This gives a total energy of minus three sigma e. Now the energies of the dx squared minus y squared need to be determined. Luckily, the total energy will be the same as the orbitals are degenerate. This means that each interaction is minus 3 quarters e sigma to give a total energy of minus 3 e sigma. Why is there a difference between these two interaction types? For the dz squared, there is a stronger projection along the z axis than the x squared minus y squared orbital has along the x and y axis. In addition, the orbital coefficients of dz squared are larger than the coefficients of the dx squared minus y squared. Looking back to the sigma only molecular orbital diagram, there are degenerate non bonding and degenerate eg star orbitals, which are split by an energy which is approximately delta O. And this delta O is also approximately 3 E sigma. And so the angular overlap method is a different way to count up the separation between the T2G and eg orbital sets. The usefulness of the angular overlap method is that it gives a good approximation of the orbital splitting energies of metal complexes with different coordination geometries. The splitting of an octahedral complex is 3 E sigma. What if the geometry of the complex is changed? How does this affect the splitting energies? For a square pyramidal system, one ligand along the z axis is removed. This will reduce the energy of the dz squared orbital by e sigma due to the loss of this interaction. Then, by removing another ligand on the z axis, the d orbital splitting diagram for a square planar complex is derived, as the energy of the dz squared orbital is further reduced by e sigma. Because of the drop in energy of the dz squared orbital, square planar complexes are usually low spin d8. For all these systems, the T2G set and the dx squared minus y squared orbital do not change in energy. The angular overlap method can also be used to determine the splitting for pi interactions between metals and ligands. For pi acceptor ligands, the strongest interaction is between the dxz orbital and a ligand pi star orbital. The antibonding orbital with large pi star character is higher in energy by e pi than the original ligand acceptor orbitals. Each of the d orbitals from the T2G set are either stabilized or destabilized by a total of 4 e pi. This can be determined from the orbital contributions and seen visually as any of the T2G set d orbitals can interact with up to four different ligand p orbitals. Pi acceptor ligands are stabilized by these interactions, and so delta O is equal to 3 e sigma plus 4 e pi. Pi donor ligands are treated similarly to the pi acceptor case, but with the energy signs reversed. This means that molecular orbitals with high d orbital contribution are raised in energy, whereas the molecular orbitals with high ligand p donor orbital character are lowered in energy. Pi donor ligands are destabilized by their interactions and so delta O is equal to 3 e sigma minus 4 e pi. 
An inconsistency arises between angular overlap and ligand field theory as the same six ligand orbitals are stabilized by both sigma and pi interactions in the angular overlap method, whereas in ligand field theory they are treated separately. This means that the angular overlap method is most useful as an approximation to calculate d-orbital splittings. Let's check comprehension. 